In today's tutorial, we are dealing with a JavaScript fundamental, but it is a fundamental that I receive as a question quite frequently. Many are unsure how to address deeply embedded arrays and objects. For example, when there is an array of objects that then has an array with additional objects, how would you address a property in one of those embedded objects? We're going to take a look at that today. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember to check out the discount links to all my courses in the description. I just released a brand new course titled JavaScript, the Critical Parts Masterclass, and it's doing really well right now. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I provided a Patreon link. Now, addressing properties on embedded objects is a necessary skill, which may not seem obvious to some. However, I find out that once the technique is int introduced, the response is, oh yes, of course. Also, I want to take a look at addressing these objects and properties using dynamic data, data that could change. So let's jump into it. All right, as you can see, I've uh, concocted some data here that uh, is an array to begin with, and then it has objects, actually two objects. These are user objects here. They have some properties, name, and quizzes. The quizzes property is an array, another array, which consists of quiz objects. Those quiz objects have some properties, ID, score, questions. The questions property is another array, which then has additional objects. So you can see I've embedded some objects pretty deeply here. And I just want to use this as an example of how we would address some of those. All right. So the important thing to remember is when you're addressing objects, you use dot syntax. When you're addressing elements in an array, you use the brackets with the index position. Now brackets can also be used with objects, which we'll look at, but that is used when variable data is a part of what you're trying to get and you need to compute its value, the value of that variable data. That's when we'd use brackets with objects and I'll, I'll show that. But I first want to do just some straightforward referencing or addressing of these objects and arrays. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'll do this all as a console.log statement, and I'm just going to address the very first object. That's all. That one's pretty simple, but I wanna do that because then we can see how it breaks out, how all this data breaks out. So data is first an array, that's what it is first. And so we use brackets to address an element in an array. This one here would be zero, and this one here would be one. All right, so let's save that. Let's just take a look at that much. Open the console here and refresh. And as you can see, we're getting that object. And this allows me to show you how deeply embedded it is. So here's the initial properties on that object. And then the quizzes property is another array. And you can see the objects in that array. And then if we open one of those objects up, the questions property is another array and that has objects inside of it. And so that's how deeply embedded all of this is, okay? All right, so let's do something a little more involved now. So I'm going to access the same first object within the data array. So we'll use zero for that. And then inside of there, I want to access the quizzes property. So here's where I use dot syntax and I specify quizzes because that is a property of that object. This ref references an object. So now we use dot syntax to reference a property. That is now an array. And so let's say I want to get the second quiz listed. So I do that and the second quiz if we come up here, the second quiz is an object. So now let's use dot syntax to access a property, this score property here. So we should get zero. That's what we should get back. I'm gonna, cons I'm gonna comment out this one here so we don't 
have any confusion. And then refresh, and there's our zero. So there's the basic idea of traversing data when we have embedded objects and arrays. Let's go one step deeper. Let's go into the questions array as well. So I'm gonna comment out this one here and then console.log and let's let's do the second object now so i'm going to go one and then that is there is an object and so i want to access quizzes that's the property i want to access and then i'm going to access the first quiz in fact i only have one in this one and then i want to access the questions array now that's a property so dot questions like that. Now, what do we want to access inside of questions? Well, let's go ahead and get the second question, this object down here. So we use brackets, square brackets, because we're inside an array and we don't want to address the second element. So that's a one. And then inside of that, let's get the correct property. So dot syntax again. There we go. Save that. Let's see what we get. Correct. Property should be false. And we do get false there. All right. So that, I think, illustrates the basic idea of addressing deeply embedded arrays and objects. Now, what last thing I want to talk about is what if some of this data is variable that we want to use? Let's say we have a variable up here. And maybe this is pulling data from some response from a user. They're telling us what data they want to see. And we're going all the way into the question. Let's just say we're going into the same questions array or object, that question object there. And this variable is going to tell us which property to retrieve. In this case, we want to retrieve the response, not whether it's correct or not, but the response. So this is where we use square brackets when we have variable data in an object so really quick before i do this if i had an object let's say i i just had this object right here and it wasn't embedded at all okay if i wanted to get the response data using dot syntax i would do it like this that would get the response data for me but if I were using variable data, something assigned to a variable, and I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that what the string was. The way I would get that is using square brackets. And so that would be the same thing as doing obj.rsp, R-E-S-P. It would get that response data. The bracket causes the variable to be computed and we pull the value out, and that's what we use for the property, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to do down here. I'm going to modify this just a bit. Instead of doing dot correct, what we want to do is another set of square brackets. Now notice how we do this, square brackets with square brackets. That is sometimes what, the thing that can throw people off. And so this is going to get the response of this second object, which should be no. Let's go ahead and save that. We refresh. And there we're getting no. All right. So that's how you do that with variable data. And we could do this entire thing here with variable data. Inside an array, it doesn't change. If we have something other than an index number, let's just, let me just show you that really quick. So I'm just going to, a variable of num here. We could put num right there. refresh and we'd still get the value no so that's how you do it with arrays this is how you do it with objects all right so an important fundamental and hopefully that was helpful for you all right if you want more remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section click that bell button to be notified about new releases i release tutorials as often as i can and thanks again for watching